President Biden declaring the United States exit from Afghanistan calls it a success. But what does the rest of the country think? He screamed it, by yeah, the way. Yeah. Uh, Fox and Friends Enterprise reporter Lawrence Jones is just a few miles uh, from Fort Lee in Virginia, where thousands of Afghan refugees have passed through the medical care and processing. And he joins us now for the Keystone Grill. Hey, uh, Lawrence, what's happening? Hey, Brian, I'm still trying to figure out why the president of the United States was yelling who he was yelling at. Uh, I'm, I got Mike here. You're a veteran. Thank you so much for your service. You. you worked on those C-17 pl planes, and now you're a pastor, and you're talking with veterans every single day. What are they saying? Well, the biggest thing they're concerned about is, did their sacrifice matter? I mean, you just referenced a few minutes ago, we were in this war for over 20 years. Uh, my son served in Afghanistan, and he told me this week as he put his uniform back on for the first time after having deployed back from Qatar, and just, what does it mean? Did it have any value? You know, we watched 20 years of our sacrifice, of our investment, literally evaporate in seven days, the billions of dollars of equipment that we left behind to equip an enemy that we, that is our sworn enemy, and yet, what did what did we gain from it? Veterans are calling me and they're struggling. They're struggling with the idea that the sacrifice mattered. And so that's really concerning to me. Where's the mental health of our of our veteran community and are we making sure they're okay? Thanks, Mike. Uh, and that's a sentiment that we continue to hear guys from a lot of folks here. I want you guys to hear from Kevin here. Uh, thank you so much for your service too, sir. Uh, you, you said you lost buddies at 9-11. Well, yeah, we lost uh, not only the civilian casualties that we had when the towers came down, but we had over um, 365 firefighters that lost their lives and, and hundreds of law enforcement officers that lost their lives, not to mention what happened at the Pentagon. You know, we are, we're back to square one. You know, President Bush, I remember him standing on, on that pile of rubble uh, telling the world that we're going to get the people that did this and taking the steps that we did throughout the years to put this country in a position where we could protect ourselves, protect our borders, protect our people. Now we've turned over a, a, a country back to a terrorist state that's going to put this entire country in the world at risk. And it's, it's shameful. It shouldn't have happened the way it did. And Andrew, you say that we should have never left that equipment there. And that concerns you. I mean, absolutely. Uh, uh, you know, it's one thing to leave that country the way we did <clears throat> and leave the equipment behind. But, you know, to, to leave Americans, every, every creed of our military says you do not leave people behind. And, and the, to leave the equipment with a known terrorist organization, unacceptable, un, completely unacceptable from the Biden administration. What do you want to hear from the commander in chief as well as the joint chiefs? They need to step up. They need to step up. They took an oath in office to uh, protect us uh, and leaving equipment behind, leaving Americans behind. That does not. It's just, just unacceptable. And guys, as you know, Fort Lee is right down the street. A lot of veterans here, a lot of military spouses here, and they're passionate about this. And we're going to be honoring the troops, the 13 troops, all morning today. we got a table set up for them. Uh, we thank them for their service, and we thank them for their sacrifice. I'm going to send it back to you guys in New York. All right, Lawrence, we thank you very much. And the folks there at the diner say that despite what the president says, the pullout was not a success.